Welcome to the Taking a Breath Podcast with Parker Mays. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's episode of the Taking a Breath Podcast. I'm Parker, and today joining me, I've got Yasmina Ellens. Yasmina is an entrepreneur based in the UK who I would consider to be kind of this networking expert. I've already learned a lot uh, from her over the past few months and, uh, and, and through some mutual friends. I actually got connected with her through Greg Santos, who I had on a few months back now, and she was on the Taking a Breath community um, as a guest. And so it's been cool to, to get connected with her through our network. And so I'm excited to talk about that. She uh, recently graduated from Cambridge University and is currently pursuing a master's in innovation entrepreneurship management at Imperial College London. She also hosts a podcast called The Young Entrepreneur's Journey. And if that all isn't enough, she uh, also hosts several masterminds and runs her own business called The Kingpin Network. So Yasmina, thanks so much for joining today. I'm excited to have you and would love for you to just uh, throw a quick introduction uh, for, for the audience as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me on, Parker. I love your energy. I'm so excited for this interview. And yeah, thank you for the introduction. That was brilliant. Um, so maybe I can start by telling a story, which is to understand more about me, because you might hear like, oh, she's she's networked with like seven to nine figure business owners and has cool friends from all around the world. And you might think, wow, that's, that's really scary or impressive or whatever adjective you want to put. But kind of, you know, I, I wasn't always this way. And I wasn't always good at this. And you know, before really embarking on my entrepreneurial journey, I was very frustrated because I lacked people in my life who shared my vision and my obsession with building an awesome life and my desire to make a really positive impact in the world and just, just live life to the full, you know? And I was, you know, I was a high achieving student, straight A student at Cambridge. Um, I was, I was lonely. I was overworked because everyone, I, I was frustrated because I was seeing everyone else who was settling, but they were out partying, they're having a fun time. They're enjoying my life. And I'm just like home alone inside, like working to build my dreams. And so <laughs> that wasn't fun either. And I really wanted to find these other elite performers like me to go on these fun adventures and make money with, but I didn't know where to find them. And I also wanted to form meaningful connections with these really successful mentors who I knew could shortcut my path to success. But I thought, you know, they're kind of out my league, like multi-billionaire, <gasps> they're, they're up there, I'm down here. That doesn't make sense. Uh, and so really when it all changed around for me was I took this prestigious corporate internship and I ended up working all hours of the day on something that I didn't really enjoy. And I was surrounded by people who embodied this mentality of thank God it's Friday. And they, they sacrificed a lot of their work um, life working on something they weren't really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, so they could just like live for the weekend. Um, and I wasn't really about that. So I knew that deep down, I wanted to be this entrepreneur. Um, I wanted to do this, but I, I didn't know anyone I didn't know any entrepreneurs. I had zero entrepreneurs in my network. Yeah. I have a lot now. That was maybe a year and a, a few months ago. Um, and so I knew that if I didn't go out to find my people, then they're not going to come find me. So I literally went to all of the entrepreneurship events in London that I can find. I went all in. I went on Google events, meet, meet up, Eventbrite, Facebook events I let every event I could find I could put it on my calendar showed up had value I was enthusiastic I started a podcast like you Parker to um, connect with like-minded people as well and I even flew across the Atlantic Ocean it was a huge risk uh, <laughs> flew like to the other side of the world to meet serious people in New York and this was during a very busy Cambridge term uh, in my final year at Cambridge University uh, and it was the most money I'd ever spent on any kind of program or event ever it was really, really terrifying but it was the best decision that I've ever made and now I have this global social circle of high performing friends from all around the world we work in exciting projects we make money we have fun adventures together we develop relationships with several multi-millionaires seven eight seven eight nine figure entrepreneurs and like i've saved so much time just from building relationships it's really shortcut my growth in every single way possible um, and i only spend time with people where our goals and our values are really in alignment and it's it's so happy and it's so fulfilling and it's so exciting so it's just so worth it. People underestimate the power of relationships, but mm. you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And it, it is an accelerator for everything, I'm telling you. So 
that's a maybe I rambled a bit there, but that's a bit of an intro about my story. Do you, so this is interesting because I know two-way value is something that's been kind of big, these like idea of like win-win relationships. And it's something that you talk about a lot. I'm curious for students, right? Especially, you know, we're, we're 16, 17, 18, you know, and, and just starting to get into even like the school world. What, um, what tips do you have for, for us to just create that two-way value or like what leverage can we use as students in order to to reach some of the people you know I know that you're getting much further along now and so what what tips do you have for at least kind of getting started into that world oh so a few things if you're as students you have a big advantage and that is that you are young and so when someone who is very experienced and way ahead of you and could be a potential mentor and they're, they're maybe like 20 years older than you, but they see someone your age, maybe you're, you're 18, 19, 20, whatever it is. And they see someone who has that fire in their eyes and they're passionate and they're bright and they, they're on a mission and they want to succeed. You know, people who are really high level, especially if they've made a lot of money, obviously you're not going to add much value by giving them much more money. I mean, you could obviously pay them for their mentorship. And that's a, that's a great way to add value. It's like, okay, well, you're providing a service. I'm going to pay for it. That's that's how the economy works, right? Sure. But also if it's just like a, a, a casual informal mentor, someone who's made all that money and gained financial freedom, they want to give back. Mm. They now want to make an impact. They want to help. And they get a selfish feeling about themselves of joy of like i help this person and they're taking my advice and they're implementing it and look at all of these cool things that this young kid parker is doing he's so bright and he's got so much ahead of him and so they just get that feeling of joy and so the best thing that you can do um especially in terms of building relationships with people who are a bit ahead of you perhaps is to do everything that a mentor tells you to do over deliver um don't don't ask them a question without having googled it for at least an hour you know hmm. you need to yeah. you need to know that they need to see that you've actually taken initiative and done your research because um people like that their time is very valuable and right. so if it's something that you can easily find on google they're going to be like come on man like that's <laughs> not serious um, but yeah, just, just being very eager and very enthusiastic. That's the best thing you can do. Another thing is, especially if you're at university, it's, uh, you know, you have so much opportunity. Everyone wants to help a student. If you say you're a student working on a project, people will just <laughs> open the doors for you. Yeah. People just do that. If you're a student working on a project, you're going to get to speak to some very, very high level people. And you can use your university brand name to do that. Another thing that you can do is you can see which professors that you're, you're very excited about their work that you want to get to know that could open up a lot of job opportunities. Mm. If you make build a relationship with the right professor and you're just a good student show interest in their work. Um, you need to be strategic about who you really want to build that relationship with. It's not going to be anyone. Literally, like, write down a list of the professors that you'd be really excited to work with or to learn from and start building those relationships from there. I'm I'm really interested because in in especially this um, like type of podcast setting where I'm reaching out with like you said the intention of hey I would love to have you on the podcast right that's kind of like the in right and 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 we've chatted about that but um, something that I struggle with is that follow up like okay we've done the initial conversation and I know this is how it is a lot of times like one off networking things like oh let's grab lunch or let's have a little quick chat and. Um, any tips for how to actually build the relationship after that, like initial conversation, um, if you really hit it off with that person? 100%. I think one of the most effective ways to do this is to understand what this person's goals are. Hmm. At the end of every podcast, I always ask my guests if they don't have to run off straight away, what are your goals? Because when I understand what their goals are, maybe I can help, maybe I can't. But then at least I know. And once I have an understanding, I might be like, hey, if they're, if they're, if they're I'm a linguist, right? I speak seven languages. If they, if they are like, oh, well, I really want to learn Spanish right now. I'm like, hey, here are some resources. Yeah. Give them that. Hit me up if you have any questions, hmm. right? So you're, you're already planting the seed for future communication, future interaction. Um, maybe 
they're looking for a, a marketer for their business and you're like oh cool i know i know a really great marketer i think you two would really hit it off i think yeah. you'd be a great fit to work together if you want to i can introduce you then of course you go to the marketer and you ask if the marketer is willing for the introduction <laughs> don't right. just don't just pop them in a group chat and they're like whoa i wasn't expecting to be introduced <laughs> to anyone you, you need to ask for permission from both parties beforehand but you could do that for example um you could just you know check in like a few months later and you, maybe the conversation has been dead for a while and then you you might send a very simple message saying uh hey mark <laughs> hey mark um i just saw maybe maybe you had a discussion about i don't know something very specific like a, a unicorn dog and you'll be like hey mark this is really random but i just saw a unicorn dog right now and it made me think of you i hope you're doing really well uh have an awesome day uh just that like you know just some kind of excited happy positive message that doesn't ask for anything uh. and you're putting a smile on their face because a, a, a big mistake a lot of people make in follow up is they'll be like hey how are you and the first mistake is one that's really boring and two you're yeah. asking for their input so you're asking for their time so if i see hey how are you? how do you feel when someone writes hey how are you and you haven't spoken to them in six months you're like uh <laughs> yeah. what is that initial like what do you want like why are you asking that right like that that's yeah it. <laughs> what do you want that's exactly what i think the moment i see that message and i'm like this is a taker this person's gonna what are they gonna ask me for yeah. when you can show that you're not a taker you're a giver hmm. and you don't need anything from them you just want to see how they're doing cool you don't see that do they're doing well you're you're an exciting person to be around you bring the vibe of course they're gonna be fine with that and if they don't reply that's fine if they do you, you're nurturing that relationship 100 so, i love that quick hack there yeah, that's that's incredible. And and it's funny because even like little things like um I'll I'll have uh some like post on Instagram or something, you know, I'm scrolling and this reminds me of this person that I built a relationship with or like started the conversation. I'm just like I just send them that. It's like a, just like a little like funny like post or something and like even little things like that where they're just like, "Oh, ha, like hope everything's going well or whatever," right? It's just those little things and and once you mention that, that that kind of brought up that memory because especially when we're networking with young people, you you know, we're all on social media or different things like that. Just using those little tools as informal ways to kind of like get our foot in the door, even, even like that. So I love that tip. That's awesome. Definitely. Okay. A, I, we got to address this because you, you said that you speak seven languages, which I remember you saying before. It's incredible. Um, <laughs> any, any like quick tips, this is like a sidebar. I know this, was, this wasn't initially on the plan. Any tips for, for people they are like, hey, you know, I want to learn a new language or like I've been trying and I like language isn't my thing. Like you have like mastered uh, the art of learning new languages. Any like quick tidbit for anyone out there? Yeah, very quick tidbit. <laughs> Number one, uh, eliminate that limiting belief that you think language isn't for you because the moment your brain tells you language isn't oh. my thing, language isn't for me, I'm bad at languages then automatically your brain is going to behave that way. Wow. You're not actually going to learn the languages because you don't believe that you can. So firstly, believe that you can do it and know that you can, because uh, you can. It's, it's easier than you think. Languages are taught in the wrong way in the school system. Uh, they're trying to teach you all the words, like the colors and the animals and the numbers. And uh, they don't teach you how to actually formulate sentences and stuff mm. like that. Um, so <laughs> quick tip, uh, it's uncomfortable. But the best way to learn a language, the quickest way possible, is to start speaking it from day one. Hmm. You learn it by speaking it. And you learn it by putting yourself out there and sounding like an idiot and fumbling through the dictionary being like, uh, je crois que uh, je m'appelle... Uh, and like, you're like looking upside down and they're like, <laughs> the person you're speaking to is like, eh, quoi? Um, <laughs> uh, but like, go, there's a website called italkai.com. Uh, where you can literally tandem partner with people to just start speaking straight away and it's just a matter of being corrected over and over again and soon you'll pick it up that's a that's a quick tip that's so good hey just uh, even that first one i feel like that that was straight at me like i've always been like oh i'm not a languages person like that's not my thing and so uh, i i appreciate that i i uh i think that for anyone out there hey 
those those are really good good tips and ideas. So um, I want to jump back in talking about something you mentioned in passing there, imposter syndrome, because especially this is something that I've struggled with um, doing like and, and have been working consistently over the past few months um, to overcome um, for you initially getting into networking with, you know, you mentioned seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs. Do, did you struggle with imposter syndrome when you're networking with these people initially? Initially, yes. Initially, yes, because you see that they're so ahead of you and they've achieved so much. In fact, before I talk about this, I'm going to talk about getting into Cambridge University. Okay. Which, awesome. you know, this is one of the best universities in the whole world. <laughs> it's like top, right? And so I think most people who get accepted into Cambridge experience imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you're walking in on the first day and you're like, I'm not supposed to be here around all of these smart and intelligent people. I think they made an admin error. <laughs> and so many people believe, I believe that so hard. And it just comes to realizing that, you know, stop comparing yourself so much to other people. Realize, realize your traits, stop discounting your value. I mean, that's that one of the things that helped me overcome that imposter syndrome when connecting with high high level people um, was that, OK, well, they're a bit ahead of me, but I've also done some amazing things in my life. Uh, I speak seven languages. I've been a musician since the age of six and like performed on these like in the Pantheon and Rome and in Cambridge colleges and on the radio and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and then like, just like straight A students, like, like literally do this exercise where you write down everything in your life that you can think of that you've accomplished mm. and not just things that you've accomplished. Like this is the highlight reel of my life, but also what, what challenges have you overcome that mm. other people have not overcome? Have you overcome a drug addiction? Have you overcome depression or anxiety? Have you overcome uh, a TV or a video game or a porn addiction, you know, what are the tough times that you struggled through and that you've managed to overcome and thrive? That gives you a lot more confidence. And then you know that, okay, this person has done some cool things in their life. I've also done some cool things in my life. I'm also a cool person. And like just connecting with them on that peer level and not being that person is like, you know, very like, whoa, but more like, we're just, we're just two human beings. You know, you strip away, you strip away the money with celebrities, right? You strip away the fame and the cameras and the makeup and the lights and the money and the status and all that kind of stuff. And you just got two human beings who are like bone and flesh and flawed because everyone is flawed. Everyone has problems and we're all going to die. And that's powerful, like realizing, just stripping it down to those super basic levels, actually like you realize like, oh my gosh, like there are these things that I, even like I wanna get done. Like, hey, I wanna connect with this person or this person, like we're not gonna be around forever. Like the worst thing that happens, right? And and I actually read this from you um, in one of the resources that you've put out was like um, that, hey, like the worst thing that happened, I think it, it was something just like the worst thing that happens is no, like rejection, like at the end of the day, like you're not losing anything, like even rejection is just you still being exactly where you are, right? So um, I think that's fascinating that, you know, e even I, when I start to break down those types of things, like, hey, why am I not reaching out to this person? Or why am I not having this conversation? It's just like, oh, I don't know what they're going to say, or I don't know what's going to happen. And that uncertainty holds back me and so many other like young people just because we're not sure exactly what's going to come out of it my life was just fine before i met this person so this person tells me no okay well my life is just the same and my life was great anyway so yeah. okay bare loss yeah. <laughs> and uh the second thing is awesome. don't reject yourself before you allow someone else to reject you because mm. if you reject wow. yourself you, you don't even know what they were going to say. Maybe they were going to say yes, but you didn't give them the chance to reject you. Wow. And you didn't give them the chance to say yes either. So, so let them tell you no. Don't tell yourself no first is the insight.
that don't i just want to repeat that don't reject yourself before they reject you that is like yeah. oh my gosh like we are thinking about it and we're actually the ones just saying they don't want to talk to us they didn't say they don't want to talk to us i just don't think they want to talk to me so dang that is probably like that's a huge takeaway for me right now that's so good 100 I'm, I'm glad it, it's a huge it's a huge mind shape mind mind frame shift in, yeah. in the way that you approach things and that's gonna that's gonna help you take a lot more action another thing like the three second thing do you do you want to share about that the 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 three second rule at like networking type events basically in a a live (laughs) situation you're at an event or you see someone that you really want to talk to maybe it's uh that high level speaker maybe it's that professor that you really admire maybe it's a really cool person in your class and you think they're just like they're way too cool for for me to talk to maybe it's a really beautiful girl or a handsome guy or whatever it is you see that person you really want to talk to only give yourself three seconds because if you start over rationalizing of should I should I go and say hi should I not I don't know what to say my hair looks bad today um I don't look appropriate I'm gonna sound like an idiot no 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 <laughs> countdown three two one and just go and just 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 go and talk to them and you just trust that your brain will find words to say you don't need a line lines don't some often the best line is hi i'm yasmina great to meet you what brings you here yeah i love that right it's uh it can be super super simple and so just that three two one is going to short circuit that and you just know i'm just going to move my feet in the direction of that person and stand in front of them and some words are going to come out I love that. And I think that even with the rejection idea, I think those parallel so well, because, you know, it's it those that ties in to it, right? Like I start overthinking it. And even I'm I'm debating whether I want to go over there. And that same thought comes up, oh, maybe they don't even want to talk to me. Maybe I don't have value to bring to them all of that. And so I think those part of the reason I brought up those ideas back to back is because those limiting beliefs right there, I think tie in so well. And that three second rule is a great concrete way, you know, whether once we're back in person, or even um, I was thinking about it in terms of like, hey, I don't know if I want to reach out to this person, right? I don't know if I want to write that initial email. If I just instead of being like, oh, what's the what's the thing that I'm going to say or what all of this, you know, what if I just, you know, three, two, one, I open my email, I com- I start composing an email to them and I just do it, right? Instead of having mm-hmm. all this overthought. So even in the the virtual world or, or whatever it is, um, I think that applies because, because, you know, us as individuals still have those goals, still have those people that we want to reach out to, or we want to meet. So um, yeah, just a thought there. It, it, it uh, definitely for me, I think I'm, I'm going to, you know, continue to use that even as we're virtual for sure. I love that 100%. One last thing that I want to touch on is I know that you and Greg Santos have been business partners for like a year now, but the the relationship has just been, has been kind of consistently growing. It's interesting to hear you um, talk about that. Would you share how that relationship developed and, and how that energy um, kind of evolved over time and what, what that relationship looked like? Yeah, it's pretty incredible because uh, you don't know the awesome opportunity that you have when you just go meet someone or go do something or a door opens you you have no idea what's going to happen and just to just kind of frame where we're at now is on christmas day or like like new year's eve or whatever it was one of those times we were telling each other i'm just like yo greg you're you're the best thing that's happened to me this year Hmm. and he says yeah i mean it's same (laughs) same you're the best thing that's happened to me this year um and it's such an incredible thing because we originally met at this business events business conference and just everything about it was a coincidence. There were so many reasons why we would not have met. You know, I was I was like in the front of the room. He was in the back of the room on the other side. Um, he, then like I I actually only saw him because he 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 snuck on the under the rope. He wasn't really supposed to, uh, <laughs> and he went to pitch on a stage even though he wasn't really supposed to. And he started talking about the morning hustlers. And I'd actually just been outside networking with people. I went to the toilet and then as a coincidence, I came back into the room just as he got onto the stage, at least that's how I remember it. And then he starts like pitching his, I'm like, oh, this guy's really cool. I love his energy. Um, And then, you know, he always didn't go to the conference because he actually came last minute. He booked a flight the day before um, and missed the first day and the last day. So I just saw his one pitch and I, he never met me and I didn't meet him. But then I reached out to him after I said, hey, I loved your energy. Uh, I thought it was really awesome. 
I'm I'm X person that he could recognize. Um, and it just started from there. And we did podcasts together. Um, and immediately within like the first podcast, that I think I was on his that eventually got deleted because it didn't work, <laughs> the sound issues and stuff. Um, but we were saying like within the first five minutes, it's like, yeah, you know, meeting like-minded people is, is so great. Like when you just meet each other and you vibe instantly, you click instantly. And we we're already saying that about each other in the first five minutes of speaking. Mm -hmm. And then we just developed that relationship. I was in his morning hustlers. Um, I like was an enthusiastic presence. He then released a, a course that he was sharing with some of us for free, the first five, 10 people, um, just to get feedback. And I was like, cool, I wanna add value. <laughs> so I went through the entire course. I took detailed notes on every video. I said exactly what could be done better and what what, uh, what what was really good and what could be improved. And I also made detailed notes on the sales page and how the sales page could be improved. And then I sent Greg this like really long, I don't know, maybe 17 page Google doc or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, like all of this stuff and he's just like, whoa. And then I, I hear from him at least that that's when he thought, wow, this could be a really cool person to go into business with. And we've just been developing that relationship ever since. Incredible. Uh, the, the biggest thing I love here, A, just how coincidental it was that you guys got the chance to meet. And then even more than that, how you you talk about this, like I gave value, you know, just with no expectation in return, just it's a cool guy, I really want to help him out. And then now you see how far the relationship has come as a result of you both giving value. So um, i super excited to continue learning from you. I appreciate so much all your thoughts and, and takeaways from for networking and imposter syndrome and everything that we've had a chance to talk about today. So um, really looking forward to continuing uh, to develop uh, with you and Greg. Uh, where can people find you if they want to check out more? Definitely. So the best place you can find me is on Instagram at Yasmina RTE, Y-A-S-M-I-N-A-R-T-E. Um, I also have a podcast called The Young Entrepreneur's Journey, which you can find on your favorite podcast platform. <laughs> um, and yeah, I have a re free resource, as Parker was mentioning. Uh, you can find it at www.yasminaellens.com. It's also in my Instagram bio. It's an easy place to find it. Um, and it's basically a ninja networking checklist, how to make pow powerful connections at a, a networking event. And, and some of the things that we talked about today are in there in more detail. Some of like there's additional tips that I've gotten to take away um, as I was doing the research for this. So um, thank you again, Yasmina. Thanks everybody for listening and tuning in today. And we will see you again next week. Thanks for listening to the Taking a Breath podcast with Parker Mays.